Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. I had some firm and I thought informed views about using marijuana as medicine, especially for children. But what I've just seen has changed my thinking altogether and I'm not alone. Politicians, doctors and patients are doing the same. In parts of America, prescription pot is legal and many believe saving lives. There's now a green rush to legalise cannabis for medicine nationwide. Here though, it's a crime, forcing Australian families to break the law to help their children. But they don't have to do that in the Rocky Mountain state of Colorado, where I've just been to investigate how the medical marijuana business works in practice and to meet the little girl who's helped change the laws across America. <laughs> This is Charlotte Figgy, a happy seven-year-old. But a couple of years ago, that wasn't the case. I was actually praying for her to, to just pass because it was so difficult to watch her struggle and what kind of a life was that for, her, for a person. I thought it would just be better for her to just die peacefully in her sleep some night. And, I, and, I, and it's hard to admit that, but I thought that would be better than going through what she was going through every 30 minutes. You were losing your daughter. I was losing her. This is what Charlotte and her mum, Paige Figgy, were dealing with every 30 minutes. <coughs> it's heartbreaking, but important to watch, as this one video has almost single-handedly changed America's medical marijuana laws. <laughs> Every seizure took something from her, if it was words or speech or walking or, you know, motor skills. She would wake up and come out of the seizure and lo have lost something that we had to regain. So we were always reteaching skills and she'd lose them and reteaching skills. And, and then she just started to decline and regress. Um, when she was five, she really hit her, her lowest point. Charlotte has Dravet syndrome a very rare genetic mutation that causes epilepsy and is mostly untreatable. Running out of time and options, the Figgy family turned to cannabis oil. And after just a few drops, Charlotte's life changed immediately. And the results were? The results were amazing. She was 300 seizures a week, 300 falling down grand mall seizures a week to zero after the first week of medicine. Not one. Not one seizure. <laughs> How would that little girl be today without taking cannabis? Well, she's now two and a half years older. I'm not sure she would have lived for another two and a half years. Alan Shackelford is Charlotte's doctor and a founding member of the Cannabis Business Alliance. He says no one predicted the dramatic turnaround. <laughs> this was Charlotte's last resort. It was her last resort. What changes did you see in her once she started taking the cannabis? Dramatic changes. I, I, I really didn't know what, quite what to expect, but to be perfectly frank, I was astounded at, at her complete failure to have seizures, complete lack of seizures. Here in Colorado, weed is welcome. In fact, this is America's medical marijuana testing ground. More than 100,000 patients access medical cannabis in this state, and 285 of those are under the age of 18. So while Australia debates the pros and cons of cannabis, the reality is all around me. For more than a decade, Colorado has been one of now 23 American states where residents can access prescription pop for everything from cancer to glaucoma. But it's what this plant, called Charlotte's Web, is doing for children with epilepsy that has the whole world watching. We grow medical marijuana in the strain of Charlotte's Web to the tune of about 
80, 85% of our current crops. And that's grown specifically right now for intractable epilepsy. And most of those cases are pediatric cases. So it's, it's quite controversial. Weed for kids. It's, that's what we grow it for. <laughs> it, it is quite controversial, weed for kids. Yep. I mean, that's an interesting business that you find yourself in. It is. I, I would have never imagined that this would have taken the direction that it had. Every one of our strains, you can smell what that strain is supposed to be. Joel Stanley and his brothers are one of Colorado's biggest cannabis cultivators. The five siblings, who look more like a boy band than dope dealers, are the new face of America's burgeoning marijuana business. If you would have told me that I was going to grow medical marijuana for kids, I would have rolled around on the ground laughing so hard. So, no, I mean, that, that whole side of it's just been a shock. But once people understand what it is, the controversy goes away. The Stanley brothers now treat hundreds of patients and have 8,000 more on their waiting list to access Charlotte's Web. Cannabis strain named after their star patient. This strain is low in THC, the part that makes someone high, and is rich in cannabidiol, or CBD, a non-psychoactive ingredient. Scientists believe the CBD modulates chemical activity, which helps quiet the excessive activity in the brain that causes seizures. This is a, a weed for kids. Can it make them high? Uh, you know, this is a non-psychoactive plant, so the... the the psychoactive compound within cannabis known as THC or delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol is, is very low in this plant. So it really qualifies as a hemp strain. So instead of calling it marijuana or medical marijuana or cannabis, it, it really, technically, it's hemp. It's really hemp. Would you consider moving to the United States to receive medical marijuana for Zalia? Absolutely. Would do anything for her to try that. Australian Sally White is one of the 8,000 waiting to access Charlotte's Web. <laughs> the Sunshine Coast mum's 16-month-old daughter, Zalia, has Acardi syndrome, <coughs> suffering as many as 40 seizures a day. But because she's in Australia, she can't legally access cannabis oil. It's ridiculous. There are other children that are taking medical marijuana in Australia through illegal means. We don't want to do that. Zali has enough brain trauma already that for us to try something that isn't tested could be quite detrimental to her health. We can't risk that either. But there are children that are benefiting from it. But our only option is to go to America. It is ridiculous. It's an impossible dilemma, isn't it? It's a nightmare. We don't want to do it. But what do you do? Do you watch a seizure till she dies? Sally hopes Australia will follow the Colorado model. When you step inside a cannabis greenhouse, you quickly realise how regulated this business is. Each plant is barcoded, every detail able to be monitored by state officials. Every plant has an RFID tracking chip on it, so that if one plant moves from, from one building to another within a grow, um, that registers in, in some system. Um, so we call it seed to sale tracking. There are more of these medical marijuana dispensaries in Colorado than there are Starbucks coffee shops. And in America, that is saying something. But while on the surface this state's liberal laws look like easy solutions to so many illnesses, it's hard to ignore that the science and medical research just isn't there yet. In fact, some studies say marijuana is bad for brain development and can lead to addiction. Like any drug, medical marijuana will have to undergo rigorous clinical trials before anyone can categorically say that it works and long term, it's safe. 
what is known is that between 2012 and April this year, the Children's Hospital Colorado has treated 29 children for adverse effects to medical marijuana. Two of those had severe side effects requiring admission to intensive care. Not all cases involve Charlotte's Webb, but according to the hospital, all were high in CBD. If there are no trials, if there are no human trials, then how do you know what the long-term effects of medical cannabis are going to be? It's a very important question. Uh, there isn't any evidence from that hundred years of clinical use uh, um, to treat a variety of different conditions that it had any negative impact whatsoever. But the area of concern is that now that you're using medical cannabis for children, that you don't know the long-term effects. That's really. an important point. And I think we have to always bear in mind what are the potential benefits, what are the potential risks. But medically, you're taking a huge risk. Mm. Oh, yeah. Legally, you're taking a huge risk as well. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah. Brisbane mum, Lene Carter, is taking a bigger risk than most. Travelling from Australia to America to access medical marijuana for her desperately ill son, Lindsay. She fears, by speaking to us, she may be banned from America, but is determined for our government to hear her story. We feel this is a battle we have to fight. We have to fight it quickly. We don't have a lot of time on our hands because we don't know how long he's gone. Uh, from an immigration point of view, yes. uh, are you meant to be travelling to America and doing this? I don't know. All I know is that there were doctors there that believed that this boy needs this treatment to help save his life. Lene's son, Lindsay, has a brain tumour. It's all right, darling. It's all right. Okay. Resulting in daily seizures, headaches and nausea. Mum's got you. Okay. Chemotherapy won't work and surgery could make things worse. They believe their last roll of the dice is a type of cannabis oil. It strikes me that you've, you've become marijuana refugees. Yes, we did. I guess you can call us that. Mm. Mm. We did. You know, seeking out medical treatment in a country that is so far from home, but um, when such limited options are on the table, or the options that are on the table are such high risk, we, we had no other choice. You will do anything to travel, to get that treatment? Yes, do anything to save our son. What's your message to parents in Australia who are in that desperate situation of wanting to access this to help their children? This is worthwhile to fight for, and it might be an uphill battle, and your government is saying, no, no way. This is a worthwhile thing to fight for, 100%, and don't give up. Achoo! He blows and he sneezes in the whole crowd. For now, America is in the unusual situation where personal anecdotes, rather than science, are changing laws. Here in Australia, desperate patients are hoping those anecdotes will also be heard by our lawmakers. Sometimes I feel like saying to these politicians, we'll swap children, you take my baby and watch her seizure all day long, and I'll take your healthy kid and run around the park and pretend that life's great, and you decide what you're going to do. Are you going to get it illegally? Or are you going to do everything you can to get it here somehow? Being a politician, they'd do something if it was their kid. But they obviously don't have sick kids because there's no way they'd sit there and not do anything. And in New South Wales, at least, the Premier Mike Baird has given provisional support for legalising medical marijuana, but says he's concerned about supply and regulation.